Okay, today I'm here to talk to you about the power of an individual in an interconnected world. How can an individual make a difference in such a large and complex world with 7 billion people, with such daunting tasks, such as climate change, for example? How to answer that question? Well, I'm going to draw on the teachings of three great masters. The first master is Jordan Peterson. He's a professor of psychology in the University of Toronto. And the advice that he gives to you to make a difference in an interconnected world is to make up your bed every morning. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Well, when you make up your bed every morning, you start with an achievement, the first achievement of your day. Then you put your house in order, you do your duties, you perform your tasks. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna start drawing people towards you. People are gonna start listening to what you think. And slowly, you're gonna make up your road in the ladder of society. You're gonna to get to positions of more and more responsibility because you continue to deliver. You continue to put your house in order, not only at home, but also at school, at work, at the university, at whatever you give your, you put your heart to. And slowly, when you get to positions of more influence, maybe you will start to have a say on things that matter to the community, on things to that matter to a larger region and even in things that matter to a country. Well, you may say, I don't want to be an executive or a business person, or I don't want to work in government. I want perhaps to be a researcher. Well, in an interconnected world, you may be one of the many individuals who worked in a large global network and provided the world with vaccines against COVID-19 in the shortest period of time that humanity has seen for the preparation of vaccines. You may not believe in what I say, but when you put your house in order, great things happen. When you make up your bed, great things happen. I'll give you an example. In my company, Valley, the employees, they leave the operations, the industrial sites every day, and they wear masks. And at the end of the shift, they leave their buses. And what they were doing, they were taking off their masks and throwing it away. And a lot of litter, a lot of garbage was accumulating in the bus stops. One of our colleagues, a very low level employee, a technical guy, was, had his indignation. What he started to do is to collect the masks. To collect the masks. He was collecting the masks of the, his fellow colleagues every day. And then another colleague decided to film him. And in an interconnected world, the video went viral and everybody was really impacted by the way this guy, this guy at lowly levels was making a difference in his own place. And then he started to be sought after by leaders in our organization to give his, his uh, testimony about how he sees life, how he wants to make the, the, the company better. And his voice now has raised to a point where he's an influencer within a very large multinational company which I work with. To see what the individual can do in an interconnected world, you can do it too. Well, well, maybe you may say, well, what if I fail? And then comes the teachings of the second master, Theodore Roosevelt, former president of the United States. In 1910, he was giving a speech to graduate students in the Sorbonne in, in France, in Paris, in a room with 2,000 people and he gave advice for those who fear to fail. He gave a speech, which is known, you can search at Google, which is called Man in the Arena, which basically says, and I'm gonna take some freedom here, here, that it is not the critic who counts, not the person who says how the strong man had stumbled or how the person who does things could have done better. The credit goes to the man who is in the arena who is trying to do things, who has his face marred by dust, by sweat, by blood, who falls short, who errs, starts over again and again, who gives himself to great devotions, to great endeavors, who at best, if he succeeds, he will know the triumph of achievement. But if he fails, he will fail while daring greatly in such a way that his soul shall never be amongst the timid souls that neither know victory nor defeat. Such powerful words. 
actually. There's a new series on Netflix now about Tom Brady, the superstar from, from uh, uh, football, American football, called exactly that, Man in the Arena. So you should not be afraid to fail. You should be the person in the arena. And in an interconnected world, you have lots of opportunities to try and to fail fast and to do it over and over again until you succeed. In Silicon Valley, for example, there's almost a cult around failure. People are praised because they fail and they continue to try. <clears throat> well, but I do not live in Silicon Valley, you might be saying. Well, aren't you organizing this conference? This is an endeavor. Who guarantees that you will succeed? If you're giving a talk on this conference, who knows what the feedback is going to be? But in an interconnected world, everybody can try. You can give your speech, you can organize your conference. It's gonna be seen by people all around the world. You're gonna have feedback. You're gonna learn and grow much more quickly. Okay, you've put your house in order. You have learned and grow, you failed, but now finally you succeeded. You succeeded and in the interconnected world, your success is in the social networks. And you are attracting a lot of praise, but also you are attracting haters people who don't like what you have done. So how do you deal with that? How the individual deal with such polarization in an interconnected world when it arises? Now I'm gonna borrow some wise words from our third master, Rudyard Kipling. He was a poet. He lived in the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. This time I don't know the words by heart, so I will resort an old invention called paper, and I'm going to read an adaptation to you. This is what Rudyard Kipling says when things get really dire. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal with, with lies, or being hated don't give away to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your sole aim, if you can bear to hear the truth you have spoken, twisted by knives to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you have given your life to, broken, and stop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one hit, of all your winnings and risk all of it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe and say a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve to serve you long after they are gone and hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can fill the unfor unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything on it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. These are very powerful words by Rudyard Kipling on how to deal with controversy, on how to deal when you achieve something. So now back to climate change. So you say, well, but I do want to make a difference on climate change. So how do I apply the learnings of the three masters if I want to do that? I'm going to tell you a story again about this young woman at my company, Vali. She's a very dedicated student. She has put her heart and soul into climate change. She was a one single voice and back 10 years ago within the company, she started to raise some ideas of how to transform and try to tackle the carbon emissions at our company, which are not few. The time for that hadn't come at that time, and her voice wasn't heard, but she persevered, just like the man in the arena. She had her house in order. She didn't, she didn't succumb to the controversies. And then the time has come. Everybody, every company now, talks about how to fight climate change and how to reduce their emissions. And all of a sudden, we started looking for knowledge within the company, and there she was. She started to put forward her ideas. She gained a voice in the organization. And today, she's very influential. 
she's leading a very large program on climate change within the company. And guess what? Because Vali, the company I represent, is one of the five large mining companies in the world, whatever Vali says is also heard by the other mining companies. And now there's an international movement about how mining can help tackle climate change and how mining can produce products that help the customers, for example, the companies who make steel, for example, tackle climate change. And there is this young woman representing, taking her ideas around the world, collaborating in virtual conferences with people all over the world in order to tackle the greatest problem that humanity has today. She has put her house in order. She has been in the arena all this time. She has given 60 seconds of her unforgiveness to the decisive minutes all over these 10 years. And if she does that and she's helping fight climate change, you can do it as well. Thank you.